Well, March is Women's History Month, a time to honor and highlight the contributions of women all across the country. And today we're stepping into the world of virtual reality where one Bay Area native used technology and innovation to take an industry by storm. Kevin Coe has her story. Another day, another safety training course by Pam Isom. Get you into the VR and then have you go do CPR. She's the president and CEO of ICE Safety Solutions, which provides companies and their employees life-saving training. Today, she's teaching CPR and earthquake safety in Fremont. I'm in the headset, my instructors are in the headset, and what's happening is they're experiencing someone having a cardiac arrest in front of them. This class uses the same tools you'd see in most CPR courses, but the VR headset allows students to get real-time data and feedback in a more realistic emergency setting. It also is more collaborative, like CPR competitions based on compression data. ICE's clients include Honda, Coca-Cola, and the Golden State Warriors. But it hasn't been easy for Pam since she started the company 25 years ago. Being a woman in safety, right? Because when you think about CPR, what do you think about? A fireman, police man, right? You, it's always men. So when I first came, you know, you know, into the space, everyone thought I was the admin. Her passion for safety training started when she was 16 years old, the day she saved her father's life. He was hanging out his window and like heaving, like he couldn't breathe. After she stepped in with her CPR training, she decided she wanted to teach others, and she did. But after college, she was also a researcher at a pharmaceutical company. Then she had her first kid. So I went to resign from the pharma company and they were like, well, who's gonna do our CPR? I'm like, I don't know, like I have this baby. And they're like, just, just be a contractor. That's how ICE was born. But growing wasn't easy, even with her ideas of expanding safety training into virtual reality. Nobody would invest in it because they're like, oh, it's safety. It's not very sexy. It's not very cool. And so I really had to gamble on myself. After rejection after rejection, she finally got enough credit from a bank to invest. And now she's here. This wall is full of stories from clients who used Pam's training in action. He came home and found his one year old in the bottom of the pool. And he had to pull him up, call 911, do CPR, and his son survived. Her success story isn't all glitz and glamour. Even today, Pam still finds herself defending her life's work. Given what's happening in the country, specifically around diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, it's this is the most difficult in terms of looking people eye to eye because they see who our customers are. And they sometimes look at me like, oh, you just got that because you were a black woman. And so it is hard. Uh, I do have to fight a lot harder, but I just have to keep going with, we're a business enterprise who happens to be minority because our proof are the lives on that wall. Those lives that are here today, that proves who we are, and that's a, a totally different type of merit. Another day, another obstacle for Pam to overcome. And according to the Health and Safety Institute, women account for 25 to 29 percent of the safety profession while making up 47 percent of the country's workers.